Good evening and welcome to the COVID-19 update on channels, television and Minnesota will walk out first, the highlights. NCDC announces a sharp rise in COVID-19 cases across the Federation in the last 24 hours. Over 12,000 people tested for the COVID-19 infection in Jigawa State as governments renew efforts to curb community transmission in the state. And people who have been fully vaccinated in the EU or US will not need to isolate when coming to England from an amber list country. And with 2,439,850 samples tested for the coronavirus in Nigeria, the latest daily COVID-19 infections shows the highest daily toll in more than four months. The country recorded 404 new cases from its previous high figure of 317, which was reported on July 24. In a breakdown by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC Lagos recorded an alarming 356 new infections, thrombing a previous record of 157. The last biggest daily increase this year was 708, which were recorded in March 2021. Let's take a look at the virus outlook. In the last 24 hours, Nigeria witnessed a spike in daily COVID-19 infections as the Nigeria Center for Disease Control announced 404 confirmed cases from 11 states and the FCT indicating a jump from the 213 cases recorded a day earlier. Infection rates were largely concentrated in Lagos, which reported 356 cases, followed by Rivers with 18 cases. Seven cases were reported from the FCT, while five cases were recorded in the Kiti and Kaduna states. Three cases each were reported from Gombe and Kano states. Two cases each were reported from Edo and Ogun, while Bayelsa, Plateau and Nasarawa states registered one case each. According to the agency, there were zero cases in Sokoto, Oyo, Imo, and Enugu states. The overall count of confirmed cases in Nigeria now stands at 171,728. 39 persons have been discharged in the last 24 hours, raising the total number of recoveries to 164,837. According to the agency, Lagos accounts for the state with the highest number of cases currently on admission followed by Kwaibom, Rivers, Oyo, and Anambra State. There were no casualties from COVID-19 complications in the last 24 hours, leaving the fatality toll at 2,134. Presently, there are over 4,747 active cases in the country, while over 2.4 million samples have been tested so far. Over 6.5 million confirmed cases and more than 166,000 deaths have been recorded across countries in Africa, Globally, more than 195 million COVID-19 cases have been confirmed, while deaths have surpassed 4.1 million. And Kano State Government Ministry of Health has held its annual summit with a theme strengthening primary health care towards attainment of universal health coverage through full implementation of minimum service package. The event, which brought together all stakeholders and health workers in the state, was to develop policy documents and encourage individuals to contribute their quota to the health sector, considering the enormous uh, sector in terms of numbers and also provision of facilities. Now, the Kano State Governor who chaired the summit says that health care is a priority, especially as the world battles the coronavirus pandemic. The impact of COVID-19 pandemic lay bare test calls of health systems capacities and levels of resilience of economies to protecting and securing the well-being of the people. The full implementation of the minimum service package is very critical to closing the gaps between health insecurity of communities and promoting universal health coverage. The government has transferred all PHC staff, including payment of their salaries, to the State Primary Health Care Management Board, has also recruited medical officers for each local government and appointed the governing board for the State Primary Health Management Board. 
What remains is appropriate repositioning of health programs, which has reached an advanced stage. We also began construction of new set of offices at the Primary Health Care Management Board headquarters, embarked on renovation of 30 health facilities across the state, as well as currently recruiting additional 1,500 health workers to man our various health facilities. All these are done to strengthen the provision of high quality primary health care service in Kano State. And since the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, 12,000 people have been tested with over 500 cases detected and 16 deaths recorded in Jigawa State, northwest Nigeria. According to the Executive Secretary of the Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Kabir Ibrahim, the state government will not relent in its efforts to curb the spread of the virus across the state and with more tests and surveillance. We have uh, tested over 12,000 people in the last one and a half years I'm talking about. We have uh, gotten over 500 people who were positive and we've treated all of them. Uh, we have about 16 mortalities uh, and we are still following up a few people who are, who are still in positive situation and we are following them up in at-home management uh, strategy. So uh, people are, if you look at also the, uh, the profile of our testing in the last uh, eight weeks, you will see that every week we will have a minimum of like 200, 250 tests per week. And uh, you can barely pick more than five cases in the last two months that we got that positive. So uh, the, the, the infection control and prevention strategies are, are still being reinforced. We are still talking to people to make sure that, um, first of all, they get vaccinated. Second of all is to see that uh, we still maintain basic hygiene in terms of hand washing, use of sanitizers in places that we have suspected uh, where we, people are gathering in large numbers. So new variant or new variant, we are still on with the same protocol of protecting people, calling them to be on the watch out. And after months of low numbers, Nigeria's coronavirus cases have been on the rise in the past two weeks. Shortly after the, the discovery of the much dreaded Delta variant of the disease, which is said to be highly transmissible. But the country is also faced with concurrent diseases outbreaks like lassa fever, cholera, cerebrospinal meningitis, monkeypox and others. Um, what do we need to do to better coordinate and manage the responses? Well, joining us on the program in Lagos is Dr. Ladapo Ashingobi. He is a public health physician. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. First, I'd like to get your thoughts. Um, the case is Lagos yesterday. I mean, you know, it was really surprising, 356 cases. Um, what's your take and our efforts to sort of prevent a third wave, or are we pretty much in the middle of that wave? Well, if we go back to the last uh, community survey done by NCDC in Lagos, that was uh, almost six or seven or eight months ago, thereabout, uh, people were people's blood sample were taken, and I'm sorry, uh, nasal sample were taken, and then they wanted to know how common COVID would be in the whole of the country, in four states. Lagos happens to be one of them. And in that community survey, it showed that about one in 10 people had COVID. That's a 10%. So if we, if we follow that trend, <clears throat> uh, it wouldn't be surprising that we're getting this, why are we getting 350 or more people are testing? And uh, it means we'll get many more cases. Why, why are many more people testing? Because there is higher need for testing now. This is the summer, so some people want to travel. Some people want to do new things. And so they have to take the test. And so if you have to take the test, you are likely going to get more positive cases. And, and now coupled with an increase in social interaction, and disobedience to non-pharmaceutical intervention. So, is expected. And the thing with testing is that, you, I mean, they still, the, I mean, the rule for testing is essentially those who have the symptoms and not necessarily, we don't do pool testing or... No, no, this, this uh, result will also include those 
those who don't have symptoms that if you need to travel. You don't need to have a symptom. It's a mandatory requirement for travel, right? So, yes. So I'm sort of saying that it seems that even the cases we're getting are people who are presenting themselves to test. Yes. What about those that perhaps cannot afford the test and the test are not presenting with symptoms country. are no. asymptomatic, for no. example? No. Those who, are, who need the test in the country, that, that means those who are not traveling, the, the test is free. Yes, but they may be asymptomatic. It's still free. So we're not doing a lot. We're not doing the massive testing that we need to be doing. Yes, because people are not coming. Not because the capacity is not there enough for now. And that's why I said those tests are free. So if it is free and many more people are not coming as it was, let's say, sometime in July, August last year, June, July, August, then you're not likely going to get the numbers you expect. However, it's not surprising. Uh, Delta or no Delta, uh, irrespective of that, the testing is not enough. We have not hit it. If the whole country was doing between, let's say, 1,000, between okay. three to 500 a day minimum, then you will see what we will see, or 1,000 or 2,000. Then we can say, okay, maybe we are getting close. However, you can use this as a marker that, well, out of how many people we did test, how many came out positive. So that's the marker. So when it comes to what is called global best practices for um, infectious diseases outbreak, how close is Nigeria to perhaps, you know, a few countries? Uh, we're not that far. Every country work within his resources, his policies, and uh, within the context of his people. Um, the, in the international realm, between countries, there's what is called the international health regulation. So uh, let me, what we make Nigerians understand it better is if you are leaving Nigeria for another country, you will say you want a yellow fever, yellow card, then... So now, COVID has taken over. There is now COVID passport, something. So you want to travel from Nigeria to another country, have you been vaccinated? Or do you have COVID? So those are international coalition of how people move around, and it gives you what the international acceptable standards are. Now, that international regulation is domesticated in Nigeria. So there is the in-country type of health regulation, which is called the, uh, the Integrated Disease Surveillance and Response. Now, in this Integrated Disease Surveillance and Response, there's a structure from the local government to the state to the federal level where you have emergency preparedness committees, and then at the state you have emergency operations committee and, and at the federal. So these committees are there. So meaning we would have 774 if they are all functioning, right? Mm -hmm. And so in this... Uh, emergency prepared committee, you have a list of about uh, about 40 diseases. Okay, it has increased now because of COVID, monkeypox, and uh, H5N1. Those ones were relatively new biosecurity threats in the last seven years. So they've been added. So we'll be looking at about 45. So these diseases attract every day, every week, and every month. Now, if anyone spikes out of the regular occurrence that what you didn't expect the last month or the last year, then it becomes an epidemic in that local community. And then immediately the rapid response team of that local government is activated. So since COVID, the rapid response team of the 774 local government remain on high alert. So if you hear we think there is an increase in COVID cases in this community or in this school or in this church. The rapid response team moves in, Deploy investigate. That. They do they do surveillance. They do uh, they assist in getting the cases investigated. They do follow up. They do tracking. So all hospitals report these cases if they are uh, occurring normally, right? But if you see these numbers are increasing beyond what we expect then if something swings in. It's already in a template. It's not new. Mm -hmm. However, what COVID has done, it has brought this public health response into a higher limelight. 
All right. Well, um, I know you definitely join us again uh, yes, to talk more uh, about um, infectious diseases, but we'd yeah. like to appreciate your time on the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Lada Poashinyo, public you. health physician. Good luck and stay safe, Nigeria. You as well. Still to come, no quarantine for fully jabbed U.S. and EU travelers to England. We have that story and more when we return. Welcome back. According to the International Olympic Committee, IOC spokesperson, Mr. Mark Adams, the Japanese public should be reassured by antivirus measures taken by Olympics organizers. He said this after Tokyo reported a record high daily COVID-19 cases of over 2,000 on Tuesday. The latest rise in infections follows warnings from health experts that the summer would bring a rebound in COVID-19 cases due to increased mobility and the spread of variant. On the perception of, uh, of how these games are, I think it's very, very important with the Japanese public that, that we reassure them. And I'm sorry for those that have been here for many of the press conferences for me to go over this again, but you know about the amazing level of testing and the fact that, in fact, to a large extent, there is really no contact between the general public uh, and, 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 and the games organisers on a day-to-day on -day basis. It's very important. And our level of infection, have you seen, I think is 0 0.02 or 0 0.03, maybe more. Um, you know, this is not something that we're happy about. We need to keep working. Um, but as the Director General of the WHO said the other day, it's not actually about necessarily the level of, 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 of infection, but what you're doing. And you will have seen with all the measures we're taking, um, it is important. What I would add, however, is that the question of, of masks is still very, very important, particularly, I think, for perception. Um, and that's why, you know, we have made... We've had a number of questions on that, and I've made it very clear that this is not a nice-to-have, this is a, a, a must-have. Well, Dr. Esen Okorebi, GP Registrar, Worcester Royal Hospital, England, joins us for more. Thanks for joining us on the programme. Thank you very much. All right. I mean, you're also a sports enthusiast, and you probably know there's mixed feelings about the Tokyo Olympics and the rising cases. Um, can it be helped if countries are opening up, participants told to vaccinate and test from time to time? Isn't that an example of getting to live with the sort of new normal uh, the coronavirus has, has presented? Absolutely. Uh, and that's what we've seen with the Tokyo Olympic Games, where uh, in the last couple of weeks, uh, they have recorded uh, the highest uh, number of COVID uh, cases. So uh, about 149 percent increase this week compared to last week with about 2,800 uh, persons in Tokyo testing positive for coronavirus. But with the athletes in, in Tokyo, um, they, they, they go through very strict uh, COVID-19 testing and um, all that have been found to be positive are asked to quarantine and not compete with the sports. And that's clearly um, living with the, the virus. And that's what we are seeing even in the, in the United Kingdom. Before people can go to watch sports, uh, they should uh, show evidence that they've either uh, tested negative uh, for COVID-19 or that they have been double jabbed with the COVID vaccine. So I think we are gradually coming to that point where uh, as countries and as individuals, we are beginning to live with the virus and taking measures daily in order to reduce the transmission of this virus and also enjoy doing the things that we love to do. What interesting times these are. So if we come to England now, the number of COVID-19 patients in, in British hospitals has sort of steadily risen. Um, also the highest since March, we're being told, following a spike in cases. Yet the number of new infections has also fallen uh, each day for the last seven days. How do you interpret the data? Well, it, it is true that uh, the number of uh, hospital admissions are, you know, on the rise and the infections are falling as well as the death rate has remained low. 
Um, it is uh, difficult to interpret these results because, as we know, the data that we get from a hospital uh, usually lags behind in terms of uh, the data uh, with people that are infected on a daily basis. So in the next couple of weeks, if we see the um, hospital uh, or hospitalization still rising, then uh, that poses a problem for us in the UK. As you're well aware in the UK, quite a lot of restrictions have been lifted for the public. And uh, if the cases in hospital continues to rise, then uh, it might be a concern for the government to, to revisit some of these restrictions that have been eased. Uh, another point to note uh, might just be that uh, the, 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 the reason why uh, the numbers of infection is going down might be because uh, schools have closed. Uh, so uh, students usually transmit the, the infections uh, more during the, the school period. And in the last couple of weeks in the UK, uh, we've been on the school holiday and uh, some scientists think that that's the reason why uh, the, the infection rates are low compared to a couple of weeks ago. Let's talk about the so-called pandemic. What's your take on it? It seems that a great many people have been asked to self-isolate recently and this could have a direct impact on transmission. Right. Uh, I mean, the, the pink demic, as some people would call it, um, I think has uh, overstayed uh, its time, really, especially with uh, the easing completely of the lockdown. So the pandemic is, is a system uh, where people get pinged on their telephone when they have come in contact with people who have tested positive for COVID-19 in the UK, either through visiting a bar, a restaurant, or, or coming to, into contact with people at workplace. And when you're pinged, you then have to self-isolate for a period of time uh, usually 10 days, and then you can then return to work. But with the complete lifting of the lockdown, it will become difficult to carry on with this. And the government have, has announced that from the 16th of August, uh, people who have been double vaccinated, people who have had two jabs, would no longer be required to self-isolate when they are pinged by um, the NHS Test and Trace app. Uh, as we also know, it's been very stressful for businesses as well as the hospitals because lots of people have been pinged and they've had to self-isolate, meaning that the pressure on the NHS is even more because the workforce are self-isolating. Same thing applies to restaurants and other businesses when workers are asked to self-isolate because they have been in contact with someone who has tested positive for COVID-19. So those rules are changing and uh, people who have received their vaccines, except they test positive themselves, will no longer be required to self-isolate in the United Kingdom. And I think that's, um, once again, moving away from the pandemic and, and getting back into our normal lives. All right, Dr. Asina Karebe, we always appreciate your time on the programme. GP Registrar, Worcester Royal Hospital, England. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Well, staying with the United Kingdom, people who have been fully vaccinated in the EU or the US will not need to isolate when coming, and this is to England, from an amber list country. The change will become, or rather will come into force at 400 uh, British summer time on Monday. Currently, only people who receive their jabs in the UK can avoid quarantine when arriving from amber list countries except France. The government said the rule change would help to reunite family and friends whose loved ones live abroad. Well, here's more on the global COVID-19 update. In a huge long-awaited boost for airlines and travel companies, England will allow fully vaccinated visitors from the EU and United States to arrive without isolation from next week. We've always said we'd need to move in line with what's going on in the real world obviously people being vaccinated in Europe and in America now means that we can move to that next stage, which is allowing people to come here. Uh, and if they are double vaccinated, avoid having to quarantine as long as they've taken a test before they leave and after they arrive. Meanwhile, British Foreign Secretary Dominic Rabb warns that the world will not be vaccinated until 2024 on the current rates and urges other countries to join Britain in donating shots to poorer nations to bring that date forward to the middle of next year. So we've led internationally as well by uh, promoting and pledging 
100 million doses from our surplus domestic vaccine rollout to the poorest countries around the world. The first 9 million doses will go out on Friday for countries from Laos and Cambodia, vulnerable countries, strategic countries like Indonesia and Malaysia, Commonwealth countries from Jamaica to Kenya. And that's because uh, we recognise the importance of making sure everyone's safe. We won't be safe until we're all safe. But also, we're demonstrating Global Britain as a life-saving force for good in the world. Speaking of vaccinations, Tanzania's president, Samaya Suluhu Hassan, received her COVID-19 vaccine in public today in the most decisive signal yet of a break from the policies of her late predecessor, John Magufuli, who repeatedly dismissed the threat of the pandemic. At the launch of the ceremony, President Samaya urged all Tanzanians to get vaccinated. In other developments, Indonesia has recorded 1,824 virus deaths following a record of 2,069 on Tuesday. The country has become a COVID-19 epicenter in Asia with record infections and deaths this month. It has experienced 3.29 million and 88,659 deaths in total. And finally, Australia's biggest city, Sydney, has extended a lockdown by four weeks after an already protracted stay-at-home order fell to doubt a COVID-19 outbreak. Authorities warn of tighter policies to stamp out non-compliance. Continue to take responsibility. You can visit our website. It's channelcv.com. It has more updates, breaking news, and of course, a better understanding of the pandemic. It's at your fingertips. That's the program this evening. Thank you for watching. I'm Minnesota Walker. Stay healthy.